Hey, in this tutorial we are going to discover how to make objects rotate around other objects and also the parent-children relationship between them. That said, we are going to create this 3D imitation of the solar system by implementing what we are going to learn. Before we start, a basic knowledge of 3GS is required, so if you haven't had the chance to learn some of the fundamentals of the library, you should definitely go watch my previous tutorial, I'll leave you the link in the description below. So, as you can see, we have 3GS and the orbit control module imported, and also the images that we are going to use as textures for the planets. Then, we have the render, the scene, and the camera, and all the very basic stuff. We also have an ambient light instance and a cube texture loader to add stars to the scene just as a background, and the animate function, of course. Now, let's create the center of our solar system, which is the Sun, obviously. To do that, we are simply going to create a sphere geometry and set Sun Texture as a value to the map property within the material. Nothing special here. That done, to make the sun spin, we need to go to the animate function and call the rotate y method. So, to make an object rotate around itself, we need to call the rotate method and choose which axis the rotation should follow. However, to make an object rotate around another object, not around its own center, we need more than that. In the previous tutorial, we learned that in order to show something on the screen, we need to create it, then add it to the scene. Another way to express that is that the scene is a parent node and all the elements that we add to it like the lights and meshes are the children nodes. Having said that, these children nodes can also be parents of other children nodes. That means that we have the ability to create an object and add it to the scene. Then we can create another one or more than just one and append them to that object. But what does that have to do with the rotation, you might be asking. Well, the parent-children relationship between objects makes the children's position relative to the position of their parent, which means that if you translate or rotate the parent, the position of the children will be affected. In other words, the parent and the children form one big object, which position depends on the parent's position. Now, back to our code, let's create our first planet. Then, instead of adding the mesh directly to the scene, we are going to add it to the sun's mesh. And here we are going to add some distance between the Sun and Mercury because its default position is zero on the x-axis which puts it right at the center of the Sun, thus will be hidden. And there we go, Mercury is orbiting the Sun, but as you know planets also spin and to do that we are simply going to call the rotate y method again, but on the planet's mesh this time. Now, you see that the planet is not affected by the sun's light, which has to be expected since the sun doesn't emit light and the material used in the creation of Mercury is the mesh basic material. That said, let's change the material to mesh standard material. The planet is now dark because of the absence of the light, so let's add a light source. In this case, we are going to create a point light which is a light that has a source and it emits its light in all directions and will position it right at the center of the sun. The constructor method of the point light class takes four arguments, but we will set only three. The first one is the color of the light, the second is the intensity, and the third is the maximum distance that the light can reach. And now we have day and night in Mercury, and soon in the rest of the planets. Now, even though we got our planet rotating correctly around the sun, we still got a problem. As you know, planets don't have the same speed of rotation, and as you can see here, the orbiting speed of the children depends on the spinning speed of the parent object, which is the sun. Actually, we have no control over the speed of each planet, the only one we have the ability to change is the speed of the rotation of the sun. That means if we add other planets, all of them will orbit the sun at the same speed. Solving this problem is so easy, so what we are going to do is to merely create a parent object for each planet instead of the sun. 
Then just put that parent at the same position of the sun and then rotate each one of them at a different speed and that's it. That said, we don't need to create a geometry and add the material for each parent. Instead, we will create an instance of the object 3D class, which is the base class that the other objects in 3GS inherit from. You can think of this as an invisible object that we can add to the scene, and most importantly, more performant, since we don't need to create a material and a mesh for each one that we are going to create. Mercury now doesn't move because its parent doesn't rotate, so let's make it do so. And there we go. Now we are going to implement the same idea to create other planets, especially those that have a ring around them like Saturn. So we are going to create a mesh for the planet and another one for the ring, then add them both as children to an instance of the object 3D class and add that instance to the scene. Let's begin by creating the planet in the parent object like we did with Mercury. Now that we have the planet ready, let's create the ring. I'll take this line out because we have already a parent object for Saturn and just append the ring to it. We got our ring but it needs to be rotated so let's do that. Now we need to rotate the parent to make the planet orbit the sun and rotate the child to make it spin. I'll skip the ring rotation because it won't be noticed with the texture I'm having here. Our solar system has 9 planets, that means that we are going to repeat these blocks of code a few more times which is obviously has to be done using a function because we don't want our code to look messy with big repetitive chunks of code, not to mention that it's boring and time consuming. Our function needs to have the different values passed to the constructors and properties as parameters, therefore it will take the radius of the sphere, the texture and the position of the mesh as arguments. Now this function needs to return an object that has the parent and the child mesh as properties because we need them for the rotation. We can pass the properties this way or go the ES6 way and remove the keys. I have created a tutorial in which I explain this feature so you can go check it out. I'll leave you the link in the description. That done, to create a planet all we need to do is to call the create planet function and pass the three arguments. Now to make the planet spin we'll call the rotate y method on the mesh property and to rotate it around the sun we'll call rotate y on the object property. Next let's remove this huge chunk of code and call the create planet function again to create Saturn but here we have a special case where the planet has a ring. So what we are going to do is to add a fourth parameter to the create planet function which is an object that has the necessary values to create the ring then we will create a condition based on that fourth argument if it exists I mean if a fourth argument is passed the function will create a ring and add it to the parent object. <laughs> 